Hello, good evening, good morning, good afternoon, wherever you are. This is Zyrak, and welcome to today's Reject Flags qualifier. I'm joined today by Simbu. How are you? I'm doing pretty good, Zyrak. Uh, we got a, another Reject Percent qualifier number three. Uh, looking forward to maybe seeing a hook route for one of these seeds. That would be interesting. The uh, main uh, gimmicks for these flags here is we're going to be dealing with uh, what's generally considered the five weakest characters in the randomizer. Um, so early bosses, early tough spots in particular, like the hook, as you mentioned, are generally going to be some of the bigger sticking points. Yeah, unless we find an early Bahamut, uh, most of those early bosses can be a real drag, but... Uh, maybe we'll get something interesting. Uh, I'm sure we'll get a good show. Yeah, absolutely. The uh, I think the other major flags that we'll just touch on really quickly. Um, T4, so we can find it, basically anything, including the really good stuff in chests. Um, S2, so sirens are likely out there, but not guaranteed, and no attack uh, items in any of the shops. And we do have that spoon flag there as well, so since we will have Eddie, potentially, uh, that could also uh, be something really nice as well. Looks like our runners are just getting started, and we'll see what their first key item is. Tower key, very interesting, especially with a Golbez guarding uh, Baron. Um, I would not want to come back to Baron anytime soon. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> starting with Sid is really nice. That's probably, <clears throat> I would say, for most people in this flag set, starting with C with Sid is probably the best case scenario. Yeah, he's got a lot of defensive equipment and a bunch of HP to start off, so he protects you from most of the early bosses just through. Uh, sheer uh, tankiness. Just the all four runners start right here. See if everybody starts out uh, exploring Baron, or if people started to uh, branch out right away. I've started uh, not doing Baron early, um, at least not immediately. Uh, I don't know what your what's your general opening in a situation like this, Simba. Um, I like the Baron check because I like seeing the character, um, and just knowing what boss I'm coming back to lets me know, oh, should I put this off for a while or not? Um, <clears throat> but it's a lot of good item checks, and I usually make the standard uh, straight to Dampsey and play after this so that I have some... Good thing. I saw that in the waterway we have a dragon whip. That would be interesting if we find a Rydia hiding somewhere. Yeah, absolutely. It's a decent uh, physical attack power for her, but I think more importantly, it's uh, great for both eggs and king roos, which are two of the best ways to grind, and that gives you in one of the on, with only these five characters available, one of the better ways to do. Yeah, I saw a Knight Dude picked up an Artemis bow, so that's going to make his Sid really powerful if he finds any arrows. Uh... Yeah. <clears throat> Basically, yeah, I'm gonna stack a Samurai arrows there as well for most of the runners, it looks like. So Samurai, Artemis, Sid start should be more than enough to get you through the first few uh, generally check boss areas. Yeah, this is pretty easy as far as most starting things go. Uh, they should be able to clear out the overworld without a problem. Looks like we've got a Tella sleeping in the bed, so... Uh, we'll see if people want to wake up the old man, but... Uh, probably not unless they want to de-machine grind. Peasants is uh, making the vanilla d check. <laughs> Find, finding the nope rope and noping out, not surprising. Yeah. It's not a bad check, especially if you've encountered a couple of the rougher seeds. You can sometimes luck out and really save yourself upwards of 20 minutes if you get lucky on your checks. For sure, we had that happen in a couple, I think it was a couple of the Forge qualifiers had uh, Vanilla D-Mist hanging out with uh, value for people who uh, made that check. Wasn't it like two seeds in a row? I think it was, yeah. <laughs> uh, all right, 
runners are starting to branch out a little bit. Uh, looks like uh, Rex is going to go check to see who's on Hobbs, and uh, Rumblefish is heading uh, through Antlion Cave, which is yeah. typically the first boss check for most people. Yeah. I noticed Rex has a Crystal Ring and Tiara in his inventory. That's very nice defensive gear for Porom, and something that you can move on to Rydia later. Uh, not a bad start in terms of items. Yeah, it's it's a ton of magic defense for the late game, and Porum is in this flag set for a lot of really good reasons. But I think the primary one is that she her HP growth is is very slow. So be, having the kind of gear that you can throw on her, bringing her into Zerumis without having to over level her, can be a real time. Yeah. <clears throat> Just about to see who's at the ant lion spot here. Rex is showing us that there's another poor room on Hobbs, uh, guarded by the evil wall. Pretty, it looks like he has an ogre axe equipped, so shouldn't be a problem. And actually, taking advantage of having two uh, poor homes and casting twin. Yeah, really nice uh, little. Uh thing that uh, was recently put into the randomizer with the dupe characters that you can uh, twin even with two palums or two porums which two porums again that's a decent source of combined with the uh, the good equipment we found so far with sid is a decent source of early damage and we've got the twin harp on rumblefish's stream so uh took down bahama not really a danger that early even if you'd have to be going really slow to not do a thousand damage before his five count but uh. <clears throat> so what do you think of, of early Twin Harp like this? Because that's, that's a long check for just one potential item. What, what's your general feeling about finding that early Twin Harp? Um, I am not going to go Twin Harp until I've cleared most of the rest of the overworld. Because just in vanilla storyline, that comes after doing Baron Castle. So... You can sometimes get a nasty boss there and it just completely wall you. Um, we do have a pretty decent Sid, but still the spot is not super weak. Um, <clears throat> so I'm going to put it off until I've already checked Baron in and Fabul and maybe even Ordeals. Um, and if I still have nothing then, which is extremely unlikely, then I might make the play. But if, let's say we get the hook, then I might be going down and checking the character and who the boss is in hook before I do Twin Harp, just because it is a very long check. Right. Uh, unless you're doing it for the fans. Um. Uh, well, yeah. <laughs> but if so, if you get your... If so let's just say theoretically you grab Magma Key, do you knock Twin Harp off your list before you go underground, or do you take care of the easy stuff under- I mean, you can full loot uh, Dwarf Castle, Tamra, and Fey March, as well as get the uh, <clears throat> Fey March key item and the uh, Sheila 1 key item before you could finish Twin Harp. That's how long Twin Harp costs yeah, you. Yeah, so. exactly. Yeah. Uh, I, I definitely agree with you there. I just find people's opinion on that uh, to be interesting, but I completely agree that it's a long check. And yeah. I, like you mentioned that we have a pretty decent sit here, so it's probably not as big um, a consideration, but it is worth mentioning that that spot has, I believe, the highest pure magic defense out of all the, the boss spots. So if your party damage is heavily magic-based, I mean, you just can't get through it at all. Yeah. <clears throat> Uh, luckily, we don't have. We're not going to get any super powered uh, offensive, magic offensive parties for a while unless we have a Bahama. But even then, Bahama, Bahama should be able to go through the magic defense unless it's uh, blocked off by. Oh, what am I trying to say? Val. Uh, Val if Val's yeah. there, then you're you're not touching that with magic. But everything else, you're going to prefer to just beat your way through. For sure. 
So uh, Peasants is uh, get into Octomam at Fabul. Should be fairly straightforward here. We'll get to see what the King of Fabul is holding for us. That tower key start is kind of interesting as well when the, the runners do manage to get underground and what kind of priority you put uh, lower Babel at. It's one of the higher end uh, boss areas and the, at the bottom, especially since the this is uh, what's been dubbed K1.5 where the summon spots won't have progression for you. Yeah, with tower key it becomes quite an interesting play. Um, I would prefer to kill a couple eggs before I made that jump because that spot is really fast and Sid just doesn't really do good enough DPS and you're still going to be lacking in black magic power. That's one of the bad parts of this reject percent is their uh, early to mid game is really bad, but they do have the potential to be really good very late game. Right. So, a couple of things, Rumblefish finding Silkwebs in Troya, and uh, I could, did not catch the key item out of Fabul, but our fantastic tracker Maggie did. It is a magnet, so it is an easy underground access, unfortunately. No, uh, no hook seed for us, I'm sure. Who knows, maybe we'll get Demis uh, with the crystal sitting in... Uh, King... Uh, Queen spot. That's true. There, there's always hope. <laughs> <laughs> And it looks like we found the pass too, so... Uh, <clears throat> I'm not 100% sure what shop that is. Is it Silvera? Yeah, we'll see. Yeah, Silvera shop. And Silvera, yeah. So Peasants and Rumblefish getting the pass. Uh, so all that our runners need now are Sirens and a Crystal. Yeah, exactly, and then you've got uh, relatively relatively good to go and beat the game at that point. Yeah, um, this is not the ideal party to do it, but that's what really separates the best runners from the more mediocre runners is uh, being able to handle these extremely poor party setups. Uh, it could be very interesting. Yeah, for sure. There's, 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 it's always really interesting. It's, it's sort of one of those weird dichotomies of randomizer where you want the seed to go really fast, but then sometimes when it does, and you're totally not ready to beat, to beat the game, and you wind up scrambling. Yeah, it looks like Rumblefish is going for that Twin Heart play. Unfortunately, his audio was acting up before the match, so we won't be able to get any heart music from him. But. Uh, maybe we, he will activate the harp and we can uh, look and see what song is playing. Yeah, well, hopefully, yeah. It's a um, really interesting play on uh, on Rumble's part here. The fact that he's looting everything sort of makes me think that he's thinking this is probably something a lot of other people won't do this early and that can potentially pull some good stuff with the T4 out of the, uh, out of the chest out of here that other people won't have as well. Yeah, I mean, looking for an adamant armor is... You, you have the pass, you know you only need the crystal. I can definitely support this play. Uh, if you can find an adamant in one of these chests, and... You're pretty much in a very powerful spot. We did just see a Bahama, so... <clears throat> no Rydia to use that yet, but it could ha save his day later. Yeah, that's a, that's a very good point. The Muhammad summon is is realistically one of the best things, other than an Adam and Armor, you can pull out of the chests uh, for this flag set, in all likelihood, assuming you get a ready to use. Yeah. So Peasants has uh, head underground, is going to go check the free item in the bottom of the Fey March. And it looks like Night Dew is just picked up his magma key. We'll see what uh, he decides to do with that, whether he heads straight underground or continues to clear out the overworld. Little surprised that no one has uh, knocked out the, the Baron Inn at this point, but maybe <clears throat> we'll see Night Dew or uh, Rex take that on shortly. 
peasants getting the baron key, but I'm not that surprised that no one's done baron in. Um, Sid can tank through it, but with just two party members, it's really risky. That's uh, something like 5,000 HP, and it hits really hard, and it's just about as fast as Sid is at this point, so uh, it's definitely a little bit risky to try the Baron in, but Rex going in for it, so we'll see what happens. Yeah, looks like Rex is going to give it a shot in here, yeah. Uh, peasants wisely checking for the D-Mist, uh, but no D-Mist today. Uh, it looks like Rumblefish showed the Black Omen is the song, so... Yeah. <clears throat> And uh, encore. Oh, don't get to hear oh, it. <laughs> oh, and man, we would get to hear it for a long time with the gauntlet <laughs> being here. But oh, this has got to be. This would be absolutely nerve wracking as a as a player. You make this play into this time consuming check, and you get the most time consuming boss at the end. Yeah, that's one of the quote-unquote bad parts of this particular check is you don't have anywhere to reset out of. It's You have to commit to the play, so if you're wrong, you basically lose. Um, he's really hoping this is something important. If it's the package, then he just wasted a good probably... 10 minutes, maybe 12 minutes on this check. Yeah, that's it's it would be uh, pretty pretty time consuming for sure. You'd have to hope that that if this isn't progression that progression is some kind of giant trolley chain that you know people are likely just going to have to check the twin heart themselves to prove it's not what they need anyway. But yeah, you know, grasping at straws <laughs> for sure. I'm would definitely be taking whatever the spot gives me and running with it uh, because if it's not down this chain, you've lost. Yeah, yeah, that in, in almost most cases, that would be the case. It looks like the Baron in fight, our, our second boss was the Kaipo Guards, which is about as uh, good as it gets, really. So Rex not looking like he's having any problems here. Yeah. Uh, it looks like he used an hourglass, so he had to kill the officer manually, but getting through the fight, uh, not too dangerous once you have an hourglass up. And he gets the hook, so... Not great, but you do get Eddie. <laughs> you do get Eddie. There could be a spoon. Um... Eddie can cheese a few bosses, although we've already seen Evil Wall, which is one of the main ones. And it does get you another character, um, which is potentially a thing. Uh, we know Rumblefish has a Bahamut, so if there's another one around, already at the hook spot would be nice. Yeah, we'll see if he makes that play. I don't know if he has exits yet, so that would be one of my criteria for checking the hook. Yeah. I know... Uh, Porum learns exit relatively early, but I don't. She wouldn't be close enough to have that yet. Yeah, it's somewhere around level twenty. I think it might be eighteen or seventeen. I'm not a hundred percent sure, but sometimes she has it and it's really nice, but sometimes she doesn't. Earth crystal for Rumblefish. So starting that key item chain. Uh, you have to make the Earth Crystal play, I think. Yeah, I agree. I think you have to as well. But, yeah, Porom doesn't know Exit, so he has to walk out of the cave. That's one of the uh, unfortunate side effects of diving uh, Twin Harp so early is you don't have an efficient way to get out and you're losing an extra minute trying to walk out. Yeah. Uh... Yep, so hopefully, for Rumblefish's sake, that uh, some piece of what's required winds up uh, coming out of there. I don't know if we've seen Sirens yet, so it could be Sirens down the hook path or 
on the moon, which would be very interesting. I'm still yeah. waiting for the Sirenless Seed, but I haven't seen one in so long, I don't believe it's going to happen. Yeah, it's it's fairly it's fairly rare. I, I know you mentioned that you you said it, you used to see it about one every ten seeds or so, but it certainly feels like it's a lot rarer than that. Yeah, I've honestly haven't seen a single sirenless seed where sirens can be present since uh, we changed to the three point oh randomizer, but. Looks like Rex is full looting dwarf, and Rumblefish is at least going to get some treasure. Let's see if he gets anything good, some Artemis arrows, but uh, really looking for an adamant armor. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. No luck on the adamant. The Artemis arrows uh, definitely are potentially helpful, though. Um, especially if uh, this winds up being go mode early enough that you're mashing eggs for your uh, for grinding, uh, Artemis arrow is Sid is probably your your best bet to get through those quickly. Yeah. Meanwhile, it looks like Peasants is also getting through Baron Ann and will be getting his hook and uh, Edward, but. At this point, I'm wondering how long until people decide, hey, I want to give Dwarf Castle a try because uh, I'm not really happy with only Sid as a damage source. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, Sid as only damage source doesn't really sound great when you say it out loud. So, yeah, it's. Um... You do have, but you, you can fully clear the tower key as well. Uh, it looks like the Baron key is what was sitting in the Fame Arch. Uh, we, of course, we know that that's Golbez block, so that's not exactly desirable either. Yeah, I think maybe we had a tracker error. I believe the Baron key was picked up by peasants already, and Night Dew just picked it up. So uh, maybe we could get that updated. <clears throat> so yeah, it's definitely going to come down to about, you know, there's about three different choices that, especially with uh, with no sirens, if that's the case, if no one has uh, come across them yet, that are going to be fairly undesirable, and you got to pick one, and we'll see what people decide to choose. Yeah. I also don't think we've seen anyone check Sheila yet, have we? Uh, it's true. No, we have not. The the, the first uh, Sheila check is definitely sitting out there as well. I would have to think Go most ahead. runners. I would say I have to think most runners would be wary of Sheila one, seeing as how you've already dipped for Bull once. You probably don't want to make it three times, but but. When it comes down to all those other undesirable things, somebody may may break on that and decide to do it since it is uh, basically free to do. Yeah, it looks like Peasants is making the commitment to going through uh, Baron. Uh, we'll see how easily he gets through that Golbez fight. <clears throat> I mean, all you have to do is get a Starvel up, but... Uh... Sometimes Golbez is really trolly. Yeah, the amount of times when I'm sitting there and like, it's like, okay, I just need to roll the 50-50 for the first spell and I'm fine. And then you just lose that 50-50 five or six times in a row. <laughs> pretty, pretty amazing. It looks like Peasants is making a safety save though. So acknowledging there is a chance that something could go wrong. Uh, Hopefully he'll be able to hide his Edward before the uh, destruction begins, but unfortunately Eddie is only level 5 right now, so I don't think he's fast enough to hide before Golbez starts uh, laughing. Rumblefish unfortunately took a, took a wipe on Flame Dog um, trying to loot out uh, Tower of Zod, so he just needs to re-loot the uh, Troya treasury again. Ouch, does he not have hourglasses? 
It doesn't look like it taking a quick... Oh, no, he does. He does have a stack of hourglass ones in there. Yeah, I'm not sure. Apparently, he berserked it. I guess thinking he would get around the, the fire, but Flame Dog actually does hit relatively hard if you're not leveled and geared, so... Yeah, uh, he hits very hard, so... Uh, <clears throat> the fire is only a percentage-based uh, HP damage, so I don't know why you would... Oh, hit it with the power staff, that would explain it. Yeah, Flame Dog is no joke if you don't have a Boreas or something to instantly kill him. <clears throat> Meanwhile, Peasants is trying to take down that Golbez. Uh, let's see. Ooh. Oof. But that virus didn't hit very hard, so I think it is fine. Ugh. Close, but yeah. at this point he should be fine. He just needs to hold A, and Golbez should take care of himself. This spot only has about 4,000 HP, so... Yeah, and uh, as you can see with the spell setting that low, the bygone spot does not have a lot of magic offense at all by any stretch. Yeah. But Lit 3 is still Lit 3, and it almost took out that six. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it is. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, Rumblefish showing us the first boss, and it's Demas, so he wow. might have some value up here. Yes, for sure. And all of our other runners are probably going to put off uh, Twin Heart for quite a while, so if this leads to the crystal, Rumblefish could be in a very big advantage for this race. Yeah, he really could. He basically has uh, two free rolls for the crystal here over a lot of the other competitors in this race, so this could uh, this could pan out for sure. Uh, not just the crystal, but also Darkness, which might have obviously D-Machine Grind and potential access to uh, Sirens if they're on the Moon Shop. Yeah, that's, that's true as well. And then that... Uh, be going beyond that you, you do have he does have a bahamut summon so extra sh shots at finding iridia is also a, a really nice for him yeah it looks like night dew is deciding to go at least check for sirens he might even go and check for the character uh again i don't know if he's high enough level to know exit actually he's going for loot uh I do not like looting because these Stellmen are so annoying. <laughs> yeah, they... Every once in a while, I, I forget how annoying they really are and go in there and they just get completely steamrolled by them because not only do they hit like trucks, but they can put you to sleep. Ouch, Rex showing us that Golbez is indeed not someone to be messed with and taking a wipe. And he did not make a safety save, so he'll have to walk all the way back in. Um, so Sirens and Cure 3s are in Eblin behind that hook. This is definitely interesting. Um, so basically, Rumblefish needs to hope for either Crystal or Darkness behind Crystal. Preferably both crystal and darkness, and then he can try to uh, take this seed and run away with it. Yeah, he would be in a very, very good spot if uh, this winds up being the correct play. And it would be nice if Twin Harp was required so we can get Encore after Encore after Encore through the gauntlet. Absolutely, yes. <laughs> <laughs> So Night, Night Dew finding those uh, stalemen in the infirmary pot. Uh, gonna have to deal with them here now. Peasants taking out Dark Imps at uh, Kainazo. Sort of an interesting place for them. The Kainazo spot is not terribly difficult, but it's not completely free either. So it's a, especially for this party. It's an okay spot to get a free fight for an old. 
Now we'll see if anyone decides to make the ordeals play that they have a Tella in their party. <clears throat> uh, but I'm actually kind of interested in Night Dew's play because I just saw that he got Exit on Porum, so that makes this character check a lot easier to pull off. I mean, that may very well have been what he was thinking, that he knew the Stalemen chest was going to give Porum enough experience to get him that. The exit items were in Eblin as well, but of course he can't know that going in there. Yeah. And Baron Key gives the pan, so that will uh, allow peasants to knock uh, both of the Sheila item checks out, and I have to imagine that's where he's... Yeah. Uh, I think... Has Night Dew checked the... I see that Night Dew has the Luka Key, so I assume that was from Sheila 1. I wasn't really paying attention. Yeah, I can't imagine where else that would be from. <clears throat> But he does find Rydia at long last. I don't know if he has... I know Rex has the Bahama from Twin Heart, but I don't know if Night Dew has found anything good for her outside of the tiara and other conventional things. Yeah, it doesn't look like it. But this is... Uh, I mean, as Reject often does, this is sort of shaping up as uh, Reflect Strats for Zeromus. Getting another mage, another poor more Rydia is always helpful. Yeah. I don't know if I would fully commit to building a Reflect Strat team yet, because honestly, Rydia takes so long to level up in this season. She does. <laughs> <laughs> uh, level 55, it, it's interesting. It takes 1 million EXP to get to level 50, and then it takes another 500,000 to get from level 50 to 55. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a lot. Those extra five levels are definitely a lot. But Night Dew says, hey, I'm going to grind. I'm assuming he's going to make either the tower play or uh, Dwarf Castle, so... Uh, going to get a little bit of a slingshot here on Rydia also, so... We'll see if he gets anything... Probably only going to get virus, unfortunately, but uh, it's just sad that Rydia doesn't get anything except virus until level 30 something, 37 or something is when she gets slit 3, I think. Yeah, yeah, it's, it takes her a while. I mean, the other option could be is that if you do Dwarf Castle, you do at least get access to Titan, which is, a, you know, a semi-passable version of Quake. It, I don't think it deals quite as much damage and it takes a lot longer to cast, but it's something. Quake is just completely broken. I don't know why they decided to give that to uh, Palom. <laughs> but uh, it looks like we got a crystal ring from the pan turn-in, so pan not required. Uh... So, it looks like Rex is still banging his head into that nasty Golbez just for some for an old man at this point. <laughs> yeah, basically, unfortunately. Rumble finding uh, Waterhag and, uh, at the Vanilla Valvela spot, so a few of the free bosses have been knocked out here, so... Actually, quite a few of them now that I think about it, so if this winds up being Crystal on the Moon somewhere, there could be some pretty nasty fights out there that you have to go through. Yeah, I was just about uh, people asking about Night Dew uh, killed off Rydia and then revived her during the fight. I, I have to imagine he was keeping her low, either for anchoring or further slingshotting later purposes, and then changed his mind and decided that he uh, wanted to get some XP on her now. Meanwhile, we're about to see what Rumblefish will get from... Uh, the Earth Crystal, and it's the Crystal. So this is a required uh, Twin Harp into Earth Crystal into uh, <clears throat> Zeroma Seed. Yeah, very, very nice. 
play that's going to pay off here for Rebel Fish. Got this D-Miss check as well, which could turn into something useful. Yeah. Uh, unfortunately, he doesn't really have a way to grind unless this is the Darkness Crystal. Uh, he needs to get his Magma Key. He needs to do Baron in for his hook and get those Sirens or something. But this might be... It's a rat tail, so he might get some value out of doing Baron in. I just hope that he doesn't do Baron in and forget that he hasn't done uh Fable. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that would that would uh that would not be great. And of course I mean theoretically, you know, if you get the the hook, you get your sirens, I mean Yeah, man, I don't know, you might you might not go back to Fabul, and that would be rough, potentially, anyway. <clears throat> so I think for the other runners, I think it's there's going to be a sort of a weird... Where sort of Darkness Crystal is sort of the best thing you can hope to pull out of Tower, but I mean, does that lead you to, lead you to the moon and killing moon bosses, which we know aren't required? Uh, possibly. Um, I know a lot of people prefer to full clear the Earth, but at, especially because this qualifier is pretty uh, competitive, I could see people saying, if I go to Twin Harp, and it's on the moon that I lose. So, unless darkness is on ordeals, then we might not see. Uh, like, darkness would have to be pretty well hidden. Uh, Rumblefish is going to get his hook, so. Uh, <clears throat> he has a pretty decent looking team here. Um, he could honestly go for Reflect Strats, uh, I mean, not Reflect Strats, but Zerker Strats. He's got yeah. two Porums and two Sids. If he got an Agility Anchor, he could just uh, Berserk those two Sids and let them uh, go crazy. Yeah, absolutely. Meanwhile, Night Dew is in the tower, and... Carving up a Pale Dome, just a slow fight, he'll eventually get through it. And it looks like Peasants is following in his footsteps. Um, unfortunately, they don't know that's the, excuse me, the correct path, but uh, it might lead them to tanky items, which would definitely give them a potential catch-up, but uh, it all depends on what grind they're going to end up doing. Yeah, 10 key items is potentially the biggest save on this flag set compared to any of the others. It'd be simply because you're looking for such high levels for the radius of the Porons <clears throat> to be able to survive its aromas, having to grind out all that experience on without the, the double XP bonus is uh, really, really time-consuming. Tower of Zot was the crystal, and then we got the Rat Tail from uh, Demis. But um, if we just do a little bit of simple math, I know that most people can do two eggs a minute, and that's about sixty-eight thousand EXP a minute. To get to one point five million, though, you still need to kill. Uh, that would be like 25 minutes of egg grind. So <clears throat> it's, you could definitely save 12 minutes just from having 10 key items. Yeah. Yeah, that's uh, 25 minutes of eggs is a lot of eggs. <laughs> that's, <laughs> yeah. I mean, upper bound, you need about 40 sirens to be able to get all the way up there. And that's an enormous amount of time. Uh, 20 plus minutes spent on eggs. It's... <clears throat> Definitely uh, a big time save to have 10 key items if you're just one or two short. 
Yeah, absolutely. Of course, there's no guarantee that any spots that you go to to check for that last one or that last two are going to have one as well. So that's going to be a lot of, you know, player preference and in what they want to do in terms of putting that time forward. Interesting that Rumble is showing that he hasn't looted Dampsian until now, so maybe he does realize he hasn't done football, but obviously he's going to grab the hook and check the rat tail right now, and unless it's darkness, I think I grab the magma key, and we'll see what th goes from there. Yeah, for sure. We'll get to see Night Dew, going to see what he has pulled out. It looks like he pulled the pink tail out of the top of the tower, and we'll see what he gets from the tower turn-in key here. There's darkness. So, <clears throat> this is interesting <laughs> uh we've got two four six eight key items for night dew so if he uh did twin harp and got earth crystal into crystal he would be at 10 key items right now uh of course he doesn't know that and he's going to put off twin harp for quite a while but or maybe not he decided not to do dwarf I have to assume he's turning in his pink tail for out of an armor first. Yeah. <clears throat> so, th this is going to be interesting. It might come down to how quickly you can grind. Uh, Rumblefist accidentally blocking himself in and having to move his airship so yeah. they can get out his... Uh, but you just have to ask how far down uh, this rabbit... like how long until you actually check for bull for the magma key or do you accidentally go down the hook route uh, I, because I, I would have to think you check for bull first like i wouldn't want to leave just leave that when I, you're basically in go mode already you're basically just trying to get underground i wouldn't leave for bull i don't it looks like rumble's gonna go do it okay so that will get him underground access the question is does he now becomes an even bigger question. He's going to go check all the shops. He's going to find no sirens. How long until he checks the hook and find the sirens? Or does he forget to check the hook and mildly thinks, oh, they must be on the moon. Where's my darkness crystal, which is at the top of tower? Uh... <clears throat> Night Dew is spawning the well. Oh, no. Oh, boy. <laughs> oh, oh, oh boy. I mean, uh, hopefully he's just checking the character in the shop. <laughs> I. <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean, I don't think he's done Dwarf Castle. I don't think he's done Luka Key. I don't think. Has he done Baron? I don't think he has. He doesn't no. have the pan, so he hasn't done Baron. Uh, he's leaving so much on the earth, he's... I'm almost certain he's taking the gamble. Oh, I'm going to go to the moon, I have sirens, I can maybe do something up here. And this is going to basically throw him out of the race. Yeah, if this is anything other than the shop, he doesn't really need the character checks. So this is, I mean, Bacchus ones I think are going to be here, yeah, because we hadn't seen them. Um, but yeah, if this is anything more than that, then this is going to be really rough. Just so you guys know, it's never the moon unless it's the moon. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> and Naidu is going to find out it's not the moon. Oh yeah, that's, that's not going right back to the Crystal of Flight. That is, um... That is, yeah. Uh, Rex finding the sand ruby, so he now has access to uh, that Tella. <clears throat> In fact, we've only seen that Tella. Oh, wait. 
Where did we find the other Tella? Uh, Baron. Okay. So we do have access to some Tellas, but... So Night Dew has picked himself up a third... Oh, he only has one Sid, so a second Sid. He's actually not going to take. That's interesting. I mean, I don't blame him because I don't think we have a ton of great equipment for Sid, and even then his damage is mediocre, but... Yeah, this is unfortunate for Night Dew. Um, I understand the sentiment. It's I have an adamant armor. I can make this play, and if I'm right, then I win because I've skipped like half the earth checks. Yeah. But he's going to get burned today. <laughs> yeah, for sure. There isn't even a, a fetch item that can send him back to earth because the only one he doesn't have is the rat tail and we know where that is. I mean, yeah. best, best thing he's going to find up here is the spoon. The spoon or the package. I, are, I think only the spoon package and legend sword haven't been found yet. Yeah, that sounds correct, yeah. Interesting going for a warlock grind. Um, pretty interesting that he actually knows where he can use the siren to get warlocks. <laughs> yeah, um, I, I, I maybe he has. Are warlocks um, weak to mute elemental stuff? I would assume they are. Well, he has coffin, so I assume that's what he's going for. Oh, true. Yeah. But they are mages, so it looks like he's berserking, and it's going to be a little bit slow. I would have probably used my coffins, but it's not going to be too bad. They only have about four to four and a half thousand HP, so not the end of the world. All right, so Rumble is. Uh dropping his uh, stone in the well and is going to be opening up the underground so we'll, we'll see what he decides to do here he he is the man with the crystal so he's he's the sort of the one to watch and see what he decides to do here i mean i would have to think that you're searching for sirens and you don't do anything except the fey march item check if you don't find sirens uh, but it depends on how willing he is to check that hook. Yeah, so it wouldn't be too... I guess it would be pretty... Uh, pretty expected for him to check the three shops down here, and when he strikes out on Sirens and all of them, to then maybe go check Evelyn after the, afterward. Yeah, it's just... It's painful knowing even if it's a 50 50 chance do i check key items or do i go and check evlon because evlon is not a insignificant time check yeah though no, that's that's definitely true it definitely isn't it definitely takes you a little bit of time to get in there and even with exit that's it's not insignificant nice zeus gauntlet in the uh tamra armory there Basically yeah, personally, the... I would be looking at this party with that curse ring and two Sids, two Porums, and thinking, I just need to get Sid to level 50, I need to get my Porum up to level 50 to 52, uh, put that curse ring on Rydia, and let Sid <clears throat> end the seed. Um, maybe even go out of your way to get a... Uh, go trade in for Edward? because you could hide Edward and have him come out to Life Potion, one of your white mages, but uh, we'll see what he decides to do. Yeah, getting the uh, the rescue for Edward, especially if you have a base level Edward, he, who can sort of semi-anchor for you, as well as do the, uh, the chemist route, that would definitely interesting. Yeah, I would say that a second a Edward would be more important than a second Porum, just because one Porum can usually get the job done, but you don't want the risk of both of them wiping. But it looks like we are about to get music from peasants. Um, 
Yes. It's going to be a lot of music, so everyone get ready for your Chrono Trigger music. Uh... Yes. <laughs> it's good to be here for a while, <laughs> especially since you can't AOE these things down. Meanwhile, Night Dew is showing us the Lunar Frog strat, so going to get through this fight pretty easily. Just gotta sit through the HP. Rumble leaving Dwarf Castle. We'll see where he decides to go here. I do uh, getting through the D-Lunar, so let's see if he gets hopefully an adamant armor or something for his troubles. The spoon, so... Well, conveniently timed since Edward was uh, running out of arrows, I suppose. <laughs> But Rumble is looking, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. He actually has nine key items, so uh, this Sheila turn in is going to get him up to ten, I believe. Isn't this the Luca key? Luka I believe key. the first one, yeah. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yeah. So if he decides to check the hook and finds those sirens, he could very well be our first place finisher. Yeah. 10 key items. I mean, all, all the boxes are checked now once he has his uh, grind method uh, provided to him, so see if he decides to go to Evelyn. It looks like he's going. Uh, this is going to be very interesting because he's still... It's still going to be like a 10 minute grind and then a 7 or 8 minute uh, Zeromas fight, so not going to get sub hour on Rumblefish at the very least, but uh, it's going to be really interesting to see what Night Dew does after seeing this dot done. Uh, <clears throat> Unfortunately, he could still get really rabbit holed by trying to jump through Luca or something before checking that twin harp. Yeah. It, it, checking twin harp as early as uh, Rumblefish did it would be pretty difficult for a lot of people, especially with no real access to exits before that. Uh, so I would have to think that Rumble has got to be up there, if not all by himself, in terms of uh, finding the crystal first. Um, I don't know if that's particularly true. Uh, maybe finding the crystal first, but I think if people had uh, put the check off bef until after they found Sirens, so they could actually level up and get through the fights a little bit faster, they could have a potential advantage on him, but we'll just have to see how efficiently he can grind. Looks like he had a pretty, yeah, 10 coffins there to get through the first few eggs, so... 
He does have a stack of Artemis arrows from the uh, tr the uh, Troya treasury as well. Yeah, those will easily eat through these eggs if he has any decent bow, which honestly he should. And Peasant's finding his next part of the uh, chain. There was also a, actually the dragon whip very early in the seed as well, if people are still hunting. Them. Yeah, that was in the barren water, so not everyone's going to check that. Yeah. I think Rumblefish did. I don't know if he'll re if he still has it though. So it looks like Rumble is actually looking at his sins as if he wants to take one of, uh, keep one of them at uh, <clears throat> lower HP level, uh, excuse me, lower levels for anchoring purposes. Um, I don't know if he realizes that 14 agility is not a very good breakpoint. Um, it was a common mix conception uh, in the community. Um, but he is killing off the Sid, so maybe he thinks 14 agility is the way to go. Um, it should still be okay with this party, but it's not an ideal breakpoint. Um, it's not horrible, but it's not great. Um, 28 is when, uh, Zeromus goes from relative 1 agility to relative 2. Uh, and then it's every multiple of 14 after 28. It's just that everything less than 28 is relative 1. Um, there was a misconception that anything below 14, Zeromus was relative 0. But there is actually no relative 0, and 0 gets rounded back up to 1. So... Anything between 1 and 27 is the same as far as Zeromus's agility is concerned, but 14 means you need two and a half times more, which is, I think, what is that? 35 agility to be relative 1, so uh, he, none of these characters are going to get up to 35 agility. <clears throat> so, he'll still get some relative 2 and 3 characters, it's just that it would be better to put the Cursed Ring on and everyone be relative 1 instead of doing this slightly slower relative 2 and 3 grind. Right. I mean, he could be planning on throwing the Cursed Ring on the lower level Sid and dropping him to agility zero, I suppose. Uh, if he wanted to do that, he should have actually gone one more to 15, because if you go directly to zero, uh, you will actually get everyone, including that Sid, to be relative one. Uh, if it's any other number except exactly zero, it will get changed. Like, if you have a negative one, it becomes one. Uh... So, 14 oh, is actually a little bit worse than 15, 15. in that case, yeah. Uh, but rel the zero agility stuff is really weird. Um, I had to use that to beat one of River's Catalyte Seeds. I had to get two Curse Rings and make two relative zero characters, but we don't want to talk about that. That was awful. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <clears throat> but the game automatically makes anyone who is zero agility automatically relative one no matter what. So it does some very weird things to the ATB system. So while uh, Rumble continues to mash some eggs here, uh, Rex is headed into Emblem. We're going to find his siren. Uh, Peasants is in Zot, so on on the road for his uh, for his crystal, and uh, Night Dew um, continues to swirl in the abyss known as the Moon, uh, fighting Leviathan right now. 
uh, <clears throat> it's somewhat interesting, but Rumble casts Ice 3. Uh, does he not know that he could use a Dragon Whip or Artemis Arrows? Possibly. I mean, Rumblefish does does race a lot, um, so I would find it a little surprising that he doesn't. But to be fair, um, I, and because this definitely could happen to me, is that when you when you make a play like into the Twin Harp and it works, you can and then you, you hit your go mode, you get that you know that heart in your mouth, sort of oh my god, like I could actually have a chance here. Nobody's done. I made this weird play that people aren't going to make, and it's gotten me the crystal. And then that's when stuff like forgetting you have Artemis Arrows or a Dragon Whip can uh, definitely come up. Yeah. But Peasant's closing in on his go mode. He is literally just one boss away, I believe. <clears throat> and Rex... Finding Iridia, but unfortunately Iridia is not going to help him until he decides to do Twin Harp. Night Dude looks like he's about finished. I think Pale Dim is his last checkup here. And his Wyvern. Oh this boy. Is... Okay. It's not the... Yeah. For a second, I remembered some of the times I've tried to fight Heldim uh, Wyvern. For some reason, I've not been able to run buffer this spot, and a lot of people uh, try run buffering, run buffering, run buffering, and it never works. So, very lucky that he, the Wyvern flag is on. Yeah, why, that that's the, the the Wyvern flag just completely disables the uh, the Megan. You get the the start of uh, night uh, start of uh, Wyvern's normal battle script. <clears throat> All right, so peasants looks like he is. Heading into his water hag fight. While well, Rex is summoning the Lunar Well. Oh boy. <laughs> oh boy. And I'm almost concerned that the finish time for Rumblefish is going to be late enough that Rex thinks, oh, someone could have went moon early. And if it is, he might full clear the moon before coming back. Uh, this is essentially at an hour and 10 minutes, which is, I assume, approximately when Rumblefish will finish. It could literally be anywhere. So yeah. it looks like Rumblefish did switch over to the Dragon Whip, though, so... Uh, maybe he was just trying to level up until he knew that he could one-shot with the whip, because sometimes it's inconsistent without a heroin rope. Yeah, that may have been what he was thinking. That's a, that's a good point, because yeah, he's definitely doing it here now. <clears throat> Rumblefish, I um, meant Night Dew, finally heading back to the Earth, has concluded that the moon is a troll, and yeah. <laughs> I mean... <laughs> He's got a spoon in level. It's something. It's something. Yeah, I mean, he's going to fly through everything except the gauntlet, because no one flies through the gauntlet, but uh, it depends on if he wants to check the Twin Harp yet. I wouldn't be shocked if he did Dwarf Castle first. Yeah. Dwarf Castle, Luka Key, I don't think he's done any. Uh... Moonblaze Wolf, actually the first place finisher with a time of 1 hour, 2 minutes, and 56 seconds. Uh, GG's to Blaze, for sure. That's a that's a great uh, great finish time for this item loadout, this uh, flag set, for sure. Yeah, if I had to guess, um, I'm going to assume he took a more standard route through the early game and then decided I don't really like uh, where this is going so I'm just going to do Twin Harp and 
committed to the chain and found his crystal uh, just a little bit faster. Like, obviously, yeah. he would probably have gotten the crystal slower than Rumblefish, but I bet he got to 10 key items and such faster. Right. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. And going into the, you know, just strictly going into the gauntlet fight and being able to get through it faster would have obviously helped as well. Having anyway, exit to leave. Yeah. Uh, Rumblefish is going into his fight, has his two level 55 Brideas, but we have one very important question to ask. Whose like? butt are we going to kick today? <laughs> only one other person knows. Moonblaze Wolf is the only other person who knows. We're about to find out. Uh, technically, someone else could be in the fight right now. I suppose that's true. But after that first dot done, I hope Rumblefish can keep himself composed because this is a very scary place to be in. Uh, one person finishes and then it's like, uh oh, here comes the tidal wave. <laughs> yeah. 2000 HP for the, for the girls is not safe. He does have decent gear, so it would take a really unfortunate role, I think, but it's certainly not safe. Yeah, it's possible if you're not nerfing every big bang um and as i mentioned especially with two poems this is not a good place to be at 14 agility anchor oh my uh, <laughs> that's a new one for me jengamus <laughs> oh my goodness the big bang came out before he got his silk web off oh <clears throat> And boy, yeah, this is not going to be a fun fight. Yeah, there's uh, he's this shaking again already. Might be over before he gets a single attack off. Yeah. This is why you do not anchor with fourteen agility, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Hanging in there, so uh, we'll see what he can do, but man, this is this is not a good place to be in. No, no, this is going to be really tough. I would have been really tempted to just reset after that uh, Big Bang came off, honestly. And the new kit Saporum, please, not like this. Okay, it wasn't very... He does he have an adamant armor because that was a really low roll for a nuke. Um, I know he never went up the tower, so he never got the pink tail, but I don't think so. I mean, I do know that like we have white robes and tiaras and stuff around, so if that porum has that stuff equipped, she would have pretty decent magic defense, but even still, you're right, 400 is really low for a nuke. Yeah. Uh, this is a 9-hit Big Bang, so this is max 2700. Please don't kill Porum. And then the virus. It's just too fast. Uh, luckily, he has a moment before the black hole, and then another uh, Big Bang, but... <clears throat> Yeah, this Zeromus is not going to be very nice to him at all. So, it looks like um, Peasants is going to set up uh, using the Cursed Ring on one of his sins. So we actually will be able to see the difference really nicely here in the difference uh, of the relative agility by setting that up. Yeah. As I mentioned, probably the you do have ten key items, so grinding up to nuke is not that bad. But I think my strategy would actually be to uh, Ridia anchor with the curse string and then just go Zerk strats. It's fairly safe, but uh, we'll see. I mean, it you can't go wrong with the reflect strats if you can get to the levels. Rumblefish trying to nerf uh, Big Bangs with Crystal you That's something you see very often, but definitely works if you can time it right. Yeah, 
Yeah, he is slowly recovering this fight, so hopefully he just has enough LMP stores to last through this entire fight because uh, constantly on the defensive and casting life twos and stuff is not a good way to go into this fight. And it looks like he's almost out of star bells too, so... Yeah, it would be really difficult with this relative agility to throw on this to be able to bounce anything uh, using the wall spell. Yeah. <clears throat> Meanwhile, Night Dew is going upward deals, so... Taking his time. Really, really wanting to get that 17 out of 17. Just determined. Just determined to be the, to be the man <laughs> to do it. <laughs> Uh, meanwhile, uh, yeah, we do have a second place finisher. So Pledrak finished in second place. Official SRL time is 109.20. So Moonblaze, Wolf, and Pledrak would be the two automatic qualifiers uh, from this set to the final table. But considering where this crystal is, I think there's a pretty decent chance there could be some relatively high variance, so finishing soon would still have a lot of advantage for Rumblefish and anybody else who is uh, on or near the Zoromus. Well, it's honestly a lot better if the variance is really low. Um, that gives you a better Z-score than a really high variance, but... Uh, <clears throat> it looks like... Uh, Rumblefish is still managing to stay in there, but you just have to wonder how much longer he can keep this game of literally cat and mouse with his aromas up. I just realized it's kind of odd that we're in the booth and both of our 2v2 partners are finished first and second in this race. <laughs> wow, that is something pretty unique. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I wonder if it's anything, I would love the foreshadowing that we can't in first. <laughs> Uh, well, hey, hey now. <laughs> we I won mean, the race yesterday, so I guess that would theoretically make us even. We need a rubber man. <laughs> so Peasants is up to about 1,500 on his uh, mages here. Should be a hand handful of eggs left to go for him. Yeah, it looks like he's probably going for Reflex Strat, so this would be the very bottom that you could go in for Berserk Strats. Don't feel bad about that, Saban. That's basically the way most of the community has felt since Cebu started tackling the, uh, the internal aspects of the random I mean, I like analyzing why things happen, and uh, you can find out a lot from uh, really looking into these flag sets. And Zeromas in particular is just such a technical boss fight, and when you don't get the party that you're used to, things like this does happen. So, as you mentioned, Rumblefish is really hanging in here. Um, he has to be getting relatively close to this kill at this point. Yeah, unfortunately... Uh, <clears throat> I think he might be out of Star Veils? Star Veils, yeah. Uh, this, as I said, um, this is just going to be an annoying slow fight. Uh, Wait, nuke? Uh... He 
He is in phase two. So he I... missed the bell skip somehow? That's... I wasn't paying a lot of attention, but this Big Bang might wipe him. It's going to come really close, but if it doesn't... Does he even have enough MP to... This oh, fight... He's been <clears throat> trying to nerf Big Bangs. He may have launched a nuke directly at him to nerf a Big Bang and pushed him over the 42k. I know that he was using the crystal though, and yeah. the crystal doesn't cause the refill to happen. Yeah, he did just launch a nuke right there. That's that's why I mentioned that. Yeah. Well, I hope he can stay in there, but man, he's going to really be running low on resources pretty soon. Like right. he's out of Starvels, he's out of. Uh, he does have a bunch of either two, so. So he can does have a single moon veil that he's just popped. Yeah, he's managing to time these nerfs very well, but uh, man, this is a really, really rough fight for him. Uh, for our other runners, it looks like Peasants has just finished his grind and will be coming into the fight pretty soon. Uh, Night Dew is on the right track, trying to get through the gauntlet, and Rex is still on the moon and will be on the moon for the foreseeable future. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Night Dew's been there, done that, and that's, uh, that's a time sink. There's no other way to say it. Yeah. So Pizzen's just trying to figure out his uh, his equipment here, trying to get to, uh, the girls to be able to survive on unnerfed Big Bang if that's uh, possible to do. My goodness, this is. You know that Rumblefish has to be sweating at this point because every single one of these Big Bangs could h h roll high and wipe him. Like, there's just yeah. nothing you can do about it. Like, here we go. Like, this, this could be it. Uh... <laughs> uh, third place finisher off stream, Dragus, finished in third place, 116.35. I just feel so bad for Rumblefish right now because he was probably the second, maybe the third person into the Zeromus fight. And he everyone's just passing him because he can't finish the fight. Like it's just that bad. There's no finishing the fight. <laughs> So, uh, apparently Night Dew reset out of the Earth Crystal? That's a Uh, I wasn't paying attention, but if he did, that would... We'll have to ask him about that in the interview. I, I do recall seeing him with the heart music on screen, so I'm... If he's going back, I can't imagine why else he would. Yeah, I definitely saw him in the gauntlet fight. Uh... Interesting. I mean, it could have just been a, that's not the crystal, hit reset, and then realized, oh no. Or maybe he just liked the music so much. <laughs> <laughs> or that, yeah, I mean, it's a good tune. Black Almond's a good tune. That's, yeah.
there's definitely not an option to just, you know, sit there and let the music play if that's what you want, so. Ooh. Rubble fish. Why you have to make this so stressful? Oh, <laughs> uh, he's out of MP. Sid's got Reflect as well, so he's not going to get healed here. So Porum's got to live through. I'm not sure exactly which cycle this is on to, but it might be Nuke after this. No, <laughs> Black Hole. Uh, <clears throat> hopefully this is Black Hole into Nuke. Um, that might give him some time to recover. Yeah, it's going to give him a little bit of time to recover. Uh, Zeroma takes an extra weight action after the nuke, so you have a little bit more time to recover just for anyone who that's important to, but... Uh, uh, Ixodan <laughs> finishing off stream, uh, 119.30 and 4th. Uh, can we just appreciate that Rumblefish has been in this fight for, like, 15 minutes now? Oh god, yeah. No, this... <laughs> and Peasants I... is now in the fight, and he's got... Well, I, I'm not sure if that Sid that he cursed during actually got all the way up to 15 agility or not, so... But uh, he... he's at less HP than Rumblefish is, so I would assume no. Yeah, there was a ninja hat out there, so I don't know if he's got that on, and that's what's making up the difference. But but even still, this will be a much better relative agility setup, so you can, you'll be able to see how much better it is. <clears throat> Rumblefish finally getting to Meteo. I bet he's so happy right now. Oh my god, yes. <laughs> So this, either this white will finish it, or the next source of damage in all likelihood. That's the uh, flash! Rumblefish... This is interesting, the ex... His client exited out right as he finished? No. Okay, so Rumblefish back in and finishing officially with an SRL time of 1 hour, 21 minutes, and 19 seconds. GG to him. We will probably try to get him in for an interview here in just a minute. Peasants, uh... Yeah. This yeah. white will do it, I think. Yep. Peasants finishing uh, his aromas with an official time of 1 hour, 22 minutes, and 1 second. Um, much cleaner fight. Uh, I mean, he spent an extra 10 minutes grinding and was still able to finish only a minute behind Rumblefish. Yeah, for sure. And we are joined by Rumblefish now. GG's. Thank you much, GG doll. So, so yeah, go ahead. Uh, how did that? Was it a seventeen-minute, eighteen-minute Z fight, Phil? It was pretty long. Um, I think I had the initial idea that I was going to try to defeat Z uh, by uh, swinging flex strats with nuke and white uh, spells. Um, but and I mean, I think I came like close to death, like, maybe, like, two or three times during that race. Yeah. But, um, I managed to plug Burn back together and keep going, so... Um, yeah, that was definitely a very rough sea fight. You did incredibly well keeping your party just barely alive so many times. We were sitting on the 
edge of our seats thinking, oh no, is this going to be that one big bang that ends it all? But uh, very well done, keeping everything in. Um, and uh, yeah, any... Well, one thing I thought was I mean, the Z fight went a lot better when I just said, okay, I'm just going to kind of do a Hail Mary, just Berserk Sid, and uh, let him go after Zeromus. I think I was actually doing probably a lot more damage than uh, just having to reflect everything. So, and, and to start off with, I mean, so I thought I might have been leveling too much before I went into the fight. Um, I got my, I got, I, I made it so that uh, Rudia can uh, learn new. But of course, in this seed, 55. But at the end of the day, I'm glad I did that because I just would not have survived those big bangs if I had not leveled my characters all the way up there. So, um, yeah, I did have a small comment for you. It looked like you went for 14 agility Sid as your anchor. Yeah. That's uh, right, yeah. Were you, did you realize that 14 is not the first breakpoint, that 28 is the first breakpoint? I was under the impression that it had to be a multiple of seven. Uh, it's a multiple of 14 after 28. Really? Yes. Uh, I have a video if you really wanted to see it, but in if at 27 agility, uh, Zeromus is still relative 1, and at 28 he takes over to relative 2, and then at 42 he takes over to relative 3. Um, so, uh, was really interested on why you chose 14, um, but, I guess I, 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 the, the reason why I did that was because I was the impression that he had to be a multiple of seven to get the relativity of one. And actually, that if you had like a lower multiple of seven, it even works even better. But I mean, I think I did. Know, I um. Oh, you, you did fantastic considering the circumstances. I, absolutely. Props to you for sticking that fight out. I, I said when that Big Bang went out before the Silk Web, I just would hit the reset button right there. So, <laughs> you for favor pushing through. Um, well, I, I'll take uh, I'll take that as a compliment. I mean, yeah, I did I did like have a very a few, quite a few near death experiences there. Um, I mean, I, I'm really proud of my standing. I mean, I, I usually don't finish in the top ten, so this is actually quite an improvement for me. Absolutely, um, no, it was a great great race for you. So I guess the other major thing that was a that was a good that was play for you was the early dive into Twin Harp, which wound up leading you to the crystal. So what was your thinking behind doing that? Let's see. Um, I just thought nobody else was going to risk that, but uh, I could pull it off because in order in order to win the uh, Twin Harp fight, you need to have a strong fighter, and I had Sid, who naturally comes at a high level on early game, and he had the ogre axe. So I thought, you know what, I can probably take out whatever is there. I'll take a chance and just go there and, and check it out and then so i did that and um that ended up uh, paying off because i got the crystal was found uh, the uh, twin heart led to the earth crystal and the earth crystal led to, to the crystal crystal as i remember so um that you know had a value there early on then there was just the issue and i had the pass at silveria so then that was just the issue of just trying to get levels and um uh and Take it to Zeromus. So, I mean, I did that. I, I just, I, I try to make it. Uh, uh, I, I think that I, I realized that Magnus Cave was kind of a risky ploy because it was usually like people probably did like Fable or do some of the other ones early uh, or Mono Deals or something like that. But I thought that uh, no one else was going to do Magnus Cave, so I might have an edge if I went there and uh, got rewarded, and I was. Absolutely. I mean, that's that's perfectly perfectly viable strategy, especially for a, a larger randomizer race to do something like that. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, I really yeah. like this uh, these flag sets quite a bit because it really makes you think about strategy. You really just can't like level up all your characters, you can't, with, you know, with a Soya and you know uh, Cecil and Boza like they use the top tier characters and just kind of like annihilate Zeromus at the end of the game. You have to really be thinking about how you're going to do it because. Uh, none of the characters you're giving in this flag set are, are, ah, uh, they are not the, uh, you know, the, uh, they're, they're the rejects as the, uh, as the, uh, flag set is so named, because, um, so you have to really think about, uh, how you're going to, uh, get damage output and uh, resurrect your characters, um, to make it through that fight. Absolutely. Well, thank you for joining us, Rumblefish, GG's again, very nice finish. Thank you much. 
Uh, we also have Peasants in here for his interview. Uh, GG Peasants, how did uh, you find that seed? Yeah, thank you. Um, pretty bad. I think I played uh, quite bad the entire time. I got lucky in um, my check, to be honest. <laughs> Yeah, Naidu and Rex, uh, both of the other restreamed runners, decided to go to the moon, and Naidu is just now getting to uh, grinding, and Rex still hasn't taken the Twin Harp dive yet. Uh, I like. I, I was like, if it's gonna, if it's on the moon, I'm completely done. Like it's, it was dead last because all my fights felt like so long, and like that gauntlet in particular, I was like, oh well, I lose. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, it pay it paying off definitely uh, it's a sigh of relief for me. Yeah, we were discussing that, and Twin Harp is definitely one of those plays where if you take it and it's the answer, you probably win. But if you take it and it's not the answer, then <laughs> you're pretty much done. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah uh, like so. Yeah, I I did a pretty late Magnus like anyway like it was already like uh it, w it wasn't that fast and then seeing gauntlet there i was i was very tempted just to reset but i uh but i didn't <laughs> <laughs> yeah and it paid off for you today uh i know that rumblefish actually do dove it extremely early he got there around the i think he had crystal around the 30 or 40 minute mark and then just went in found 10 key items and then went into a grind uh, so oh. pretty efficient across the board. Uh, he actually never did Fabul until the last overworld check, it looked like. Really? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So he didn't have his magma key, and but that actually helped him a little bit uh, because he was able to find sirens at the hook place and had the 10 key items. So definitely saved a lot of uh, time in grinding. It's just that uh, you used a curse ring on your Sid, I believe? for yeah, your anchor and that made your Zeromas fight a little bit easier so literally he started his Zeromas fight at the 102 i think before the hour and he spent more than 20 minutes trying to get through it uh very impressive that he managed to hold it on he ran out of star bells. he was going running out of mp it was a very oh, interesting God. but very slow fight because he just couldn't uh keep his characters up. Zeromus was just not having any of it today. I think honestly my Z fight was the, the like by far the best part of my run. Like I think I did that was a it was a really quick Z fight, but like everything else was kind of sloppy. <laughs> yeah, it it was a very good Z fight. Um you I uh ooh, go ahead. I was gonna say I I think I forgot to equip uh, radio. I was meant to go and uh, check for uh, some sort of stuff for Porum as well in um, in Troya, but I just didn't. <laughs> so her her whites were a little bit weaker because she she genuinely was, wasn't she didn't have anything in her hands at all because she had the uh, the Artemis boat which I took off her. Yeah, but again, very well done. Um, did you have any other thoughts about the seed? Um, I, I think it was like like I got like. Suppose like lucky for um, just trying to clear out the earth as much. Um, I think if in in this in this like thing, if if it's on the moon, I'm probably screwed because I, I try to avoid the moon as much as possible. I didn't even do ordeals, so the moon was like out of the question for me. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, I, I, I was, it was a good it was a good race. I enjoyed it. Good stuff. Well, GG is very nice finish. Thanks for racing. Thank you very much. All right, cool. Thank you. Catch you guys. Well, during our interviews, we had several more finishes. Um, everyone up until 12th place has finished. Uh, Night Dew has just entered his Z fight, and Rex is finally on his way to the, uh, cr the crystal after, again, trying to full clear the seed. <laughs> yeah. yeah, for sure. So while uh, just plow through the uh, the other finishes while Night Dew is getting through here. So Peasants was in sixth place, and then behind him we had JDP in seventh, Aaron Castro in eighth, Zilch in ninth, Aizen Tayama tenth, 
Slack H eleventh, Iker twelfth, Rivers thirteenth, and Error fourteenth. So, <clears throat> uh, actually, Night Dew casting Berserk. That's interesting. It looks like he had the perfect party for Reflect Strats, but uh, either way, um, just a very interesting seed uh this is one that i'm very glad that i wasn't racing because i would not have checked twin harp so i would have been one of those people uh with the 130 finish times <laughs> yeah yeah pretty good chance that i would have been too it, it's yeah definitely not not a play that a lot of people made obviously since we're getting the slew of finishes now um, to answer a question in chat, uh, Z does use Virus. Uh, it's actually after his third Big Bang, um, if he doesn't change phases. But uh, Virus is non-elemental, so that does not have anything to do with the Adamant Armor glitch. Uh, as long as you have oh, several people up, it should do split damage and not do more than three or four hundred. If it's single target, it can do over a thousand damage, though. So be careful about that. So I'm guessing uh, Night Two is planning on either going full hybrid here, or maybe just gonna try and snipe the refill skip in between the berserk. I know somebody else in this booth who's not me is pretty good at that. <laughs> Uh, so honestly, that is all about, um, quantity over quality. Uh, if you try it enough, you'll eventually get it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <clears throat> yeah, the refill snipe is extremely hard to pull off. Um, it doesn't look like he has enough cohesion with his spellcasters to pull it off right now unless both of these whites go off at the same time but i kind of doubt it you really need a very particular setup to have a good chance of pulling a refill skip snipe off yeah i think I've, i pulled it off once by pure dumb accident not even really trying and uh, that was good enough for me i think I'll, <laughs> i don't need to do it again <laughs> Yeah, I mean, there's some rules you can follow that make it a little bit easier. You typically want to start casting white around 30,000 damage dealt and then immediately queue up a nuke after it. And if things work out, your melee fighters will boost you up to about 40,000 damage dealt and then you'll get white for hopefully 10,000 and nuke for 10,000, putting you at 60,000 damage dealt. And if you're lucky, uh, you just need to hit for a thousand more damage. Yeah. But... <clears throat> Rex one step closer. Uh, meanwhile, Night Dew continuing to just hybrid through Z. Um, pretty safe setup. Um, doing lots of damage. So just a matter of time before this Aromas goes down. Yeah. Should be very soon, actually. This, the spells are really adding up here. Sid hitting for almost 4,000, too. Yeah, and it looks like we had Error finishing in 14th place with 1 hour 33 minutes. Flurry 14 finishing in 1 hour 36 minutes and 8 seconds. Uh, Baka in 16th place with 1 hour 37 minutes and 3 seconds. And... There's Night Deuce uh, kill with an official SRO time of 1 hour, 37 minutes, and 5 seconds. So GG to Night Dew. For sure, GG is Night Dew. I'm sure we'll speak with him shortly. While Rex continues on his way to, I mean, I suppose technically 16 to 17, because I doubt he'll actually grab the rat tail from uh, Demis. Yeah. Uh, I mean... It looks like we're also missing the adamant. I wonder oh, right. what spot oh, that's, we're missing. That's the rat tail turn in. That's true. So 15, yeah. Yeah.
Let's see if I can get Knight Dew in here for an interview. Just don't do anything silly like get out, like leave <laughs> <laughs> to go check this. And we are joined by Night Dew. GG Night Dew. Thank you. So we do have a few questions for you. Uh, one, it looks like you decided you wanted to listen to music twice. Uh, that was a controller malfunction, uh, oddly enough. I, uh, apparently the uh, A button on my controller jammed, so uh, uh, I guess I, I kind of had to reset out, and I'm like, well, you know, it's either here or bear, and it's got to be one of those, so extra extra bonus music for everybody. <laughs> uh, so, so I guess the other question is, uh, are, have you joined hashtag Nevermoon yet? <laughs> One of these days, I might. Um, <laughs> I, I mean, come on, Lower Babo with the pink tail and the darkness crystal was the moon starter kit. I mean, come on, guys. I I don't blame you. I, I don't blame you. A lot of people in chat were saying that they didn't blame you either. I, that's definitely definitely rough. But yeah, we had a trolley uh, twin harp gauntlet, uh, so I wouldn't even blame anyone for resetting out of that when they saw it. Uh, just a very trolley seed. I would personally prefer to do moon than twin harp gauntlet, but uh, today the gauntlet had it, and well, not even had it. They had access to the Tower of Zot, which had it, so... Uh, yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't regret it. I mean, the moon, you know, if it pans out, uh, never found that, by the way. I'm you know, somewhere down the barren uh, thing there. But I mean, I mean, if it pans out, I have it. If it doesn't, I don't. And the nature of these races is that because you need top two or a very high finish, I mean, sometimes you just have to kind of run and see, you know, hey, is anybody else going to the moon? I mean, it, it was a, it was kind of a longer play. And I'm like, you know, let's, you know, I got, I got the sirens. I had the levels. I had the adamant armor. We were good to go. So it's like, okay, this is. I'm putting. I put my faith in the moon. I need to stop doing that, possibly. But that's that's where I went. Yeah, it was definitely a good play. If it was on the moon, uh, very likely that you had a top three finish. Uh, you were really blazing through the seed. But uh, I noticed that you left like half of the checks on Earth unchecked, which was, in my mind, a completely valid point. It's like. You've got everything you need. Uh, you're going to go as soon as possible and put go all in. And today it just didn't pan out for you. <clears throat> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> uh, we were also a little curious. Why did you decide to go for hybrid strats instead of straight up reflect strats? Um, I was thinking about it. I'm walking in. I'm like, okay, let's start counting. And then I'm like, okay, Sid's been hitting for about four thousand. The spoon's going hybrid. It's gonna be pretty much just about the same, honestly, with how that was going. And sometimes I'm a little slower on the full-on reflex strats, so I'm a lot more comfortable with the with the hybrid strats as I am with the uh, full-on reflex strats. Yeah, it's definitely a lot safer fight, especially if you've uh, gotten used to it. I, we haven't had any really good reason to do hybrid strats recently, but. Uh... This was as good as any seed to pull it off. Yep, I mean, can't be bad at it. I mean, I played well, just got the bait. Yep. Yep. Yeah, it happens. It's a randomizer for you. Well, did you have any final thoughts on the seed? Uh, you guys pretty much summed it up. I mean, uh, of course, when you leave that many checks on the Earth, I mean, of course, it's in the back of your head that you left it there. But I mean, like I said, it was you know, it was a gamble, and I was playing for you know a win, and and it just uh, I picked the wrong path, and people did. So there. Yep. Yeah, well said. GGs. It was a really well executed race on your behalf, and uh, I'm sure. People will be worried to run against you in the one tonight if you're going to show up for that one, so GG's. Very likely. Thank you, guys.
<clears throat> Meanwhile, Rex has picked up his crystal and it looks like he's already at Zeromus level, so just gonna go into this fight and uh, probably going to have a very quick Z fight. I expect a uh, 150 approximately from him. Yeah, that, that sounds about right. With this, this kind of setup, a seven, maybe eight minutes, probably the most you're gonna need. Yeah. <clears throat> Meanwhile, we had Swimmy Leone finishing in 18th place with a time of 1 hour 38 minutes, and we had our second forfeit. Uh, probably people just loving the music, but not wanting to do the gauntlet. <laughs> <laughs> probably, yeah. <laughs> So it looks like the total total racers in the race today, um, including the two uh, the two forfeits, was twenty five for this qualifying. Yeah, uh, I feel like a lot of people don't like the reject percent because we've been getting kind of smaller races. Um, it's definitely one of the tougher flag sets to like because <clears throat> if you don't know efficient grinding methods then this is literally 50% grind, 50% uh, everything else. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But... Yeah, the, the, Edward, uh, the Edward flag is, will have, have a bit of that issue uh, as well, especially since you don't have access to a lot of really efficient grinds at all in that uh, set of flags. Yeah. Uh, I guess we could talk about next week's flag sets. We have Catalyte coming up next week, right? Uh, yeah, that that sounds correct. Yeah, uh, good old uh, Catalyte. You you would be the man to speak about what you what you think to go on there much more than me. Well, uh, Catalyte, you actually don't have any random encounters, so you have to level up on trap chests and bosses, which is a very unique experience. Um, it's going to be interesting. Like, Catalyte is very nice because as it's light, we do have some very nice EXP flags and some treasure and chests and stuff that can keep us going, but... Uh, uh, for the most part, if you can get through the early game, you just have to go to the moon and level up. Yeah, that is the... So the, the the biggest challenge will be if you have to go to the, go to the moon at relatively low levels, and there are just no free bosses up there that you can really take advantage of. That would uh, could create a stone wall for some people. But I, I think for most of the count, I, I think you mentioned it in the Discord a few times that you suspect that the vast, vast, vast majority of catalyte seeds are, I guess, realistically beatable by a human being. Uh, I mean, the only one I've seen that's not realistically beatable was a Bahama in Ruby where you had only the kids, so Rydia, Palom, and Porom to get through a Bahamut, and there's no Star Vells on the overworld. So, a lot of things have to go wrong for you to not be able to beat it. Because if you have an Edward, if you have a Kane, if you have a Tella, you could beat that Bahamut, right. but uh, just <clears throat> uh, so anyway. Rex here going full, going with his full reflect stuff. Oof, that I guess the black hole messed with them there a little bit. Should still be just fine shape here. Got a lot of HP, so. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I mean, sometimes black hole timing is a little bit trolly. Uh, not much you can do with that.
but yeah we'll just wait for rex to finish up this fight i assume yeah. it's not going to take him very long and then we'll get him in for an interview and uh we'll wrap up the <clears throat> uh he should be just about through here. This black hole sort of slows his stuff down a bit. He's got another white queued up, it looks like. But he has sunk in a decent amount of damage already. Meanwhile, it looks like, as chat was mentioning, we've got floating space on the left side of our restream. <laughs> Uh, sometimes OBS does not like to play nice. No, it's true. But this is a good time to uh, say thank you to uh, our tracker man and to uh, Smapedy for uh, handling the restream for us. Being able to show you this uh, terrific qualifier today. Yeah, many thanks to Maggie. Uh, jumping in when our tracker wasn't able to show up and uh, filling in the role. Um, very appreciative that Absolutely. you were here to help us out. <clears throat> uh, how much more HP does this Theromas have? It can't be much. I can, don't think he's done anything other than reflect, so I don't think he's missed the refill. Or sorry, he yeah. triggered it. I think in this new character will probably do it. Yep, there we go. There so, Rex Roll finishing in 19th place with an official time of 1 hour, 50 minutes, and 11 seconds. GG's to Rex. I'm sure we'll get him in here real quick. So Rex is on his way in, so we'll just take a moment to plug. We got one more qualifier for the Reject Flags. It is coming up in a, about six hours from now on this same channel right here. So if you want to see some more fantastic free Enterprise action, be sure to come back later tonight. Yeah. <clears throat> anyway, it sounds like we have Rex Roll in. GG Rex. Hello. So uh, we had to ask Knight do the same question, but how long until you join the hashtag Never Moon team? Uh, well, <laughs> you see, I'm usually a Never Moon person, and so I decided I, I decided I was going to make one big gamble on the on the Blue Planet, and that was going to Baron because. I thought, well, we saw Galb is there right away, so people might avoid there. So I'm like, I'm going to make it a plan to go there. And then, of course, it led to nothing. And I'm like, okay, well, I guess I'll go to the moon now. Might as well. <laughs> yeah, that was... Obviously, there's a lot uh, that goes into routing decisions when yeah. uh, you're trying to... You need a top three or maybe top four placement to have a chance of getting into the qualifier. So... Uh, yeah, and that was that was my big thing. When the Galbez Gambit didn't pay off at all, like I think it led to the pan, which led to some piece of equipment or something like that. <clears throat> uh, and so, um, like at that point, I'm like, well, I've, I've probably just lost already because I took a wipe on that Galbez fight too. The so that wasn't good. So between all of that, I'm like, well, I might as well just go to the most likely place. And that's the moon. But well. We saw where that landed up too. So I think I just, like, other than Dwarf and uh, Sealed Cave, I think I went everywhere. So, yeah, uh, we definitely, Night Dew pretty much made the exact same plays just a little bit earlier than you. Yeah. Um, he was able to get, he actually put Baron off for a little while. Uh, actually, he never did Baron, I don't think. Yeah. Yeah. But, 
uh, it's just unfortunate that there are several checks, like the Twin Harp, the Earth Crystal, the even sometimes the Tower and uh, Baron, where when you commit to those, uh, if you they're not safe checks. Like if you go to Fey March, oh, you're going to lose 30 seconds if yeah. it's not the right key item. But unfortunately, there are several very prominent checks that if you decide to make them and they're not the right one, your chances of winning one of these qualifiers is cut literally in half, if not more. Yeah, absolutely. And, th and that's why I think like making the play to one of those spots, especially when we've got, you know, 30 people or so in a race like this, making the play to one of those spots is a gamble that I think, I think you probably should take because if it is there, then you're just set ahead of so much of the pack. So uh, yeah. whether or not it pays off, you know, sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. It clearly didn't for me tonight, but, but that's fine. You know, not that yeah. big a deal. Uh, Rumblefish was actually really made the gamble into Twin Harp. He went to hmm. Twin Harp before clearing. Uh, I know he didn't clear for Bull. Uh, he hadn't even checked all the items in Dampsian yet. He just uh, found the Twin Harp and immediate, pretty much immediately after doing his initial shop checks, went uh, Twin Harp. It didn't ex unfortunately he had a very rough Zeromas fight, which slowed him down quite a bit, mm. but uh, it was very interesting to see the differences where one person was in go mode at 30 minutes and trying to find sirens that were hidden behind the hook and everything. Yeah. And then trying to find 10 key items because they were at nine key items and so forth, versus uh people trying to make that moon gamble, and it's just the fact that it was so buried underneath key items. Uh, it was Twin Harp in behind the gauntlet into the Earth Crystal. And then you had to find some way to grind. Uh, just no way to get a early enough finish to know where it was. Yeah, this wasn't one where it's like, I'm making this play and suddenly somebody's dot duns and it's like well now i know where it is like by the time people were dot dunning <clears throat> it could have been anywhere at that point so yeah uh, it didn't give me any like i i there, i wasn't able to meta game or anything like that like just got to keep on doing what i'm doing so yeah it's definitely nice in some seeds where oh i'm going to the moon at 40 minutes and oh there's the dot done oh it has to be ordeals right exactly uh, but unfortunately this was one of those situations where it could have literally been anywhere, and yes. uh, unfortunately, and like, it was that, the last place you checked. <laughs> that Twin Harp was definitely, because that was the only other place that I was thinking of going before heading to the moon, but eh, it didn't It didn't work out today, so. I, I you know, I, it's, I can't, like, beat myself up too much. I think most of my execution was okay. I, I mean, I did have that wipe, and I know I spend more time in menus than I should, but I think I did pretty well on my battles and everything like that, so I'm pretty happy with what I did. Yeah. Uh, anyway, uh, very good job in the race. If you have any final uh, thoughts, uh, we'd love to hear them, or otherwise, GG. Uh, just that I, I actually have a lot of fun with these. I was hoping for a hook seed. I like hook seeds, but... Other, other than that, it was just uh, good. Thanks for uh, uh, letting me uh, be restreamed today. Yeah, hopefully we can get a hook seed for you tonight in the final uh, race. Uh, yeah, it'll we'll be fun. <laughs> <laughs> All right, take care, everybody. GG's again there. Thanks for joining us. <clears throat> anyway, thanks, everyone, for joining us. That's uh, all we have for our number three qualifier uh any final thoughts Zyrak? uh no i think it was a it was a really nice race we got to see a nice um on a restart runners we're gonna see a nice variety between sort of early mid-range and late game uh go mode and some different strategies on zeromas that are all viable within this flag set so i think it was a really really sort of nice comprehensive race for the flags i enjoyed it yep uh, anyway, I think we will sign off now. So 
make sure to give all of our uh, team members and restreamed runners a uh, follow, and have a good day, everyone. Absolutely. See you again in about six hours.